They are, by their own admission, the world's most fearless fighting team. They're heroes in a half shell, and get this, they're also green. Yes, it's the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. So called because the UK powers that be decreed that a late 80s child hearing the word ninja would instantly make that said child, then rush off, Mancurian candidate style, and throw a shuriken into the tit of a feudal Japanese warlord. I'm sorry if saying that has triggered something in you from your childhood and you've gone and got yourself into a spot of bother on a 10th century pagoda. You see, freedom of speech warriors... The UK has always been crackpot censorship-wise. Don't sweat it. The Turtles originally started out on a napkin in a discussion between two friends, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, and then it progressed to a gritty Daredevil tribute comic before finally it became the absolute merchandise monster that it was in the late 1980s. Was there anything bigger than this? Maybe Batman when that movie came out, but I think Turtles trumps it. The cartoon, with Uncle Phil from The Fresh Prince voicing the villainous Shredder, wasn't incredible, but the tale of toxic waste altered reptiles and their rat master engaged in a struggle against a gang of sinister ninjas led by a spiky armoured scoundrel, a punk rock pig, a rhino in an army helmet and a brain hidden in the weirdest special needs looking robot shell suit ever... Well, that struck a chord with chewed, loving preteens the world over, ones that use shorter sentences than I do. And let's not forget, of course, the world's hottest cartoon character, April O'Neil, of course, whose yellow jumpsuited frame turned my nunchuck into a bow staff many a times as a little boy. The Turtles are one of those Generation X properties that by the virtue of us never putting our toys away, well, it refuses to die. Just like Star Wars, Transformers, Ghostbusters, He-Man and many others, the Turtles will continue to reappear every few years. We'll be buying them from our children. We'll be buying them for our grandchildren. One of the most major pieces of merchandise around the Turtles was, of course, that popular 1989 Konami coin-op. A thrilling cartoon come-to-life beat-em-up that I absolutely loved to the point that it featured in my top 10 arcade games list some time ago. And as Imageworks held the licence and were in contact with Konami, there presented itself a straightforward way for them to make absolute money out of this, especially with Spectrum Coding Master's probe on programming duties. Well, no, they decided to port that divisive NES effort instead. Now hold on to your Terrapins, kids. That NES game has a fairly bad rap, but it's, it's alright, really. No, it's not the legendary beat 'em up And yes, it features a lot of generic non turtlesy villains, slightly janky controls and that swimming level. However, it is a competent and challenging platform adventure, far from the best on the NES, but also far from the worst. And with that in mind, what an absolutely incredible conversion that Probe put together. Probe were never half-assed when it came to the use of colour, were they? Just look at this. The bright sprites glide over the parallax scrolling backdrops at a good rate, and the NES's top-down exploration sections also make an appearance. While it's not as big as the NES game, as the levels have been trimmed down a bit, it's still an absolutely a brilliant-looking Spectrum game. Also cut is the ability to duck a couple of the jumps and the range of weapon movements of each character. However, it's such a tour de force from a programming point of view that it's easy to forgive a few cut corners. It's a simplified version of the NES game, but that sort of works in its favour. There were elements of the original that made it a bit too tricky and forgiving for your average 10-year-old at times, and while a little less thoughtful, it's still a pretty good game. So looking at the story, you've got the four turtles, which count as live, sort of, in order to rescue April and Splinter over the whole game. And you can collect pizza that's been left around on the sewer floors. I mean, ew, to boost your health. This is what happens when you have a rat as your sole parental figure. In the end, you'll end up at the Technodrome and you'll be able to put an end to Shredder and his nonsense and regain your master. So what do I think of it? Well, as incredible and as visual as David Perry's 
probe software are, I've never quite been taken in with their work. Even Aladdin on the Mega Drive isn't quite as beloved by me as almost everyone else. But in terms of their spectrum work, such as the previously covered Captain Planet, Savage, Tintin, Trantor and Dad Dare 3, the games always looked incredible, but the gameplay was always a little bit light. Something that carried on to their Mega Drive work. Just play Cool Spot today. It's dreadful. Not that the magazines agreed with me, nor would I suspect many others would either. Let's have a look at some of those reviews, just to prove me right. Crash said that TMHT was the best fun they'd had in ages, and while they criticised the length of the game, they said that the Turtles game is still highly recommended. Their score is 80%. Your Sinclair gave it a 90% and their Mega Game Award saying it was a jolly colourful platform and ladders romp. Simple but fast and very professionally put together. Sinclair user were even higher in their praise. This is the game for turtle dudes and anyone who wants to play a great game. Sinclair user's score was a massive 94%. Those high scores would have won over a few disappointed fans who craved Konami's coin-up. But, wouldn't you know, Imageworks had a trick up their sleeve. You see, they would come back the following year with Turtles the Coin-Op. Although only two players out of the arcade were allowed, all four tortoises were selectable, as 15 levels of high-kicking adventure are replicated in purest monochrome goodness, again supplied by Probe. Splinter and April have once again failed to stop themselves getting kidnapped, so it's up to Raphael, Leonardo, Michelangelo and old Donatello there with his purple mask, the best one as we all know, who have to risk life and limb and leap from a skyscraper into another burning skyscraper in order to rescue them. Yes, it's very much like the classic arcade beat-em-up. Simple to play, decently animated and a fair old challenge. It's not going to give Renegade or Target Renegade any sleepless nights, but it is a very good specky beat-em-up. And as a conversion of the coin-op, it's perfectly serviceable too. And it's one that I can highly recommend. It's no more limited in moves than any other specky beat-em-up. Don't worry about that. While not as visually impressive as its forebear, it's the better game in my opinion. Crash say, although the colourful graphics are gone, it's tougher to beat than its predecessor. Definitely one to shell out for. <laughs> Turtles have shells. They gave it an 87%. Sinclair user gave it a gold award and say that the Turtles 2 game is a pizza popping winner. The game has no tricks, no gimmicks, but it just brims with good old fashioned gameplay at its best. And a 90% was their reward. Your Sinclair gave it an 89 and said, while not an earth-shattering concept, in specy games it's certainly playable, exciting and set at just the right difficulty level. Out of the two, I've got to say, I do prefer the second one, but for sure number one is the flashier one to look at, so opinions may vary on this. Um, you'll not go wrong with either of these games though, so please do check them out. What game to cover in episode 75 though? Well, it seems that I should bring out a well-known game for that. Maybe it's time I talked about Gonch dying of heroin addiction, as every Spectrum reviewer has to do at some stage. Yes, next time I'll be covering good old Grange Hill. Like, subscribe, and K thanks bye.